And uh, so I was just kind of sharing with them how I feel like God is moving ministry into the hearts of unsuspecting people. I just, I just believe that in this last hour, God is igniting ministry in all of us so that we can stand in this last hour and bring some folks with us uh, when, he, when he comes. I just believe that. I believe that this is, is God's plan for the end times. Uh, when he spoke of uh, God pouring out his spirit upon all flesh, sons and daughters prophesying and old men uh, dream, dreams and young men seeing visions and signs in the heavens above and signs in the earth beneath and whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I believe that those times were, they started with the day of Pentecost, of course, when Peter got up and prophesied that, but it is now in these last times as well that he's pouring out his spirit upon all flesh. Those, those that don't have the spirit are going to be taken. They're going to be taken right out of the church and they are going to be left to their own anger and offense because they don't have the spirit. Without the spirit, you can't discern. And without the spirit, you're going to go for the wrong thing. You have to be filled. Look at somebody say, be filled with the spirit. Somebody said, well, I mean, I didn't speak in tongues. Well, get filled with the spirit and see what happens. Well, I didn't feel a warmth on me. Get filled with the spirit and see what happens. He said he wouldn't withhold any good thing from you. So you should seek him until you get it. And the one thing I know about the Holy Ghost, you know when you got it. You know when you feel. Amen. Every now and then you get some fire on you. Every now and then God will remind you, you know you feel with the Holy Ghost, right? But the best way to know is to exhibit the fruits of that spirit that's in you. That's the test. How much love you have, joy you have, peace you have, long suffering you have, gentleness you have, goodness you have, meekness you have, temperance you have. That is the, those are the fruit that show what is inside of you. I don't need you speaking in tongues and you don't have love. You don't have the joy of the Lord. You got an old persimmon prune face all the time. I don't need you preaching to me. I don't need nothing you got to say until you get your lips right. Always angry. You won't go deal with what you need to deal with. Don't, tell, don't come trying to minister to me because I don't want that spirit on me. I don't want an old cantankerous pick apart spirit on me. I want the love of God on me, which is proof that the spirit dwells in me. Amen. You know them by their fruit, according to the Bible. So I'm going to talk about this, just defending the faith, because this is these are the times when we need to be strong and we need to be defensive when it comes to the spirit. We need to be able to defend because people are going to approach you. I was telling the men Wednesday night, people are going to approach you. They're going to approach you when they see the light of Jesus Christ on your life. Why? Because there's so much darkness now. The darker things get, the more people need light and the brighter light shines. Okay? So you may have walked around for 15 years with a dim light. It's time to get some new batteries. Amen. And do that little dance that the bunny be doing on the commercial. You need new, you need new batteries. You need a new charge. You need to make sure you're full of the Spirit of God so that you can shine in this dark hour. I put up a post on Instagram this morning just because I've been getting just people, I mean, just all kinds of people emailing me just all week. Well, since this COVID started saying that when I get down to pray, it just feels like there's a darkness that I'm trying to pierce through. Like it's just, you know, I have to just stay. I mean, I, I try hard and pray and really, and I'm just, I just feel like there's a barrier there. What should I do? I say, keep praying because you got to break through it. You got to do what, uh, 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 who was that? Was that Jacob? With the ladder? Yeah, that was Jacob. You got to do that. You got to break through. You got to break through whatever is blocking your prayers. Because I'm telling you, our nation and our world, they've unleashed things. I've been telling y'all this since 2014 when I shot the video. Been telling you, this CERN thing did not go away. They just stopped talking about it. But they are still bringing things into our atmosphere that don't belong here. And it's changing the behavior of people you know. 
One day they're one way and then the next time you talk to them, what happened to you? There are things in our atmosphere. I'm telling you, you better listen to me. There are things here that don't belong in this realm and it's changing people's behavior right before our eyes. People can't love. They can't love. The Bible says the love of many will wax cold. You pull anything in from outer space, it's cold. That's what we're dealing with. We're dealing with spiritual wickedness in high places. And everybody's Googling and trying to find out what's going on on the internet and, and all this, and they're deleting it as fast as you can read it. Anything you read now that's on the internet, they put there and they want there. So you can't trust it. Uh-oh, see, it got quiet. Yeah, 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 because they're deleting the stuff <laughs> that can help you. I'm talking about the theories and all the conspiracies and everything. They're deleting the true ones. Since when did they start deleting stuff and not letting people speak out and say what they want to say? What has happened in the last few months? Y'all, it's getting real. It's getting real and the devil is coming to try to pluck you out and put your attention on something else because he knows this is getting real and his time is very short. So to defend the faith, y'all still here, amen. We must defend our beliefs in this last hour while all of the world is focused on internet theories and putting their faith in social media narratives God's kingdom needs defending. So while everyone is watching the narratives that CNN and all these other conglomerates are putting out, I told y'all way back in part four of the truth behind hip hop that it's all rigged. It's all, all news is owned by the same person. Rupert Murdoch owned all of that stuff. It's all, you can compare news, you can compare news feeds from different Different networks, they're saying the same thing. Nothing but actors to spin a narrative to distract people from what God is saying. This is the God of this world. He's the prince and power of the air. He controls the light spectrum and all the frequencies. That's prince and power of the air. It's airways, these frequencies. This is what all broadcasts rest upon. And he controls those and he delivers them to man over a span of time. There's a reason why no of them didn't have FM. There's a reason why uh, Paul and Silas couldn't tune in to the latest station. Because these beings, they give it to us over time because it's a part of their end time assassination of the human race. And every time they deliver, certain frequencies or certain dynamics of frequencies. It causes illnesses on people. And so we all have to, we have these pandemics, all these different things, whether it's smallpox, polio, whatever they use in the introduction of another level on the light spectrum. Check your history. It always happens. But now we've moved up so high on it that the next stage of this thing could kill the entire human race. And these elitists and these different ones playing with population control. And I told y'all way back in Era of Man about population control. All of this stuff is coming to pass right before your eyes. And somebody's trying to make you think it was all a lie. How is it all a lie? It's all coming true. That's past mental illness. That's, that's just baloney head. <laughs> but God's kingdom needs defending. Prepare yourself, people. Prepare yourself. Sit your children down. Teach them what the word says. Let them know the time that we're in. God's kingdom needs defending. 
First thing we have to defend, I got three things and then I'm going to be done, but the first thing we defend is the power of the resurrection. So many are feeling hopeless and that they have gone too far to even be a believer. And I hate that the church took that position against people to make them feel some kind of way. Like they, if they err it too much, they can't come or, or they're looked upon kind of funny or whatever. Like we all don't have to repent of sin every day. We have to defend it. People are feeling hopeless and they gone too far to even be a believer. The devil continues to make them feel unworthy to claim a holy God as their savior. But the power of Christ's resurrection makes us all able to be reborn, renewed, and recreated to be who God intended all along. He knew, look at somebody say, he knew what you would do. Come on, who are we talking about? I'm so glad man can't save us. Because God knew what you was going to do. So when you got saved, he knew it was going to be a process. He knew. And I tell people all the time, you get saved, you get filled with the, with the Spirit of God, and you're going good, you're going good. And then, uh-oh, now it's time to deal with issues. So you don't deal with those on the altar. You give your heart to God initially. Put your faith and confidence in him, and then he goes to work. He don't want to overwhelm you that night. Could you imagine you coming and giving your life to the Lord and you got to deal with all your issues and everything that night? You ain't going to make it. <laughs> That'd be the longest night in history. All right, then, I'm going to do something else. What's Buddha's phone number? I need help. Audio Rame EQ. I need to, I need to, I need to watch uh, what's love got to do with it. Yeah, you're going to check out. That's too much. So he doesn't do that. He welcomed, he, you open your heart up and let him in. And then he goes to work. Amen. Stuff start coming up. A, a, amen. Because he wants you clean. All he's doing is making room for himself. He knew what you would do. First John 2 and 1, my little children, these things write I unto you, that ye sin not. Look at somebody and say, don't sin. I mean, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to not sin. And if any man sin, okay, now he's talking to the church. He's not writing this to the world. He said, if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. Amen. So we want to make sure people know you come to Christ. He'll forgive you of your sins, but he's going to deal with you. He's going to deal with you and you're going to come face to face with yourself. You know, I said that a couple of weeks ago. This COVID is making folks see who they really are and what's really in them is going to manifest when you come face to face with yourself. Then the second thing you have to defend is the word of God. They are saying the Bible is false. Jesus is the white man's God. The real Jews are black. Man, the Hebrew Israelites back on the street. Somebody has sent me a picture. They, they back. I thought they had retired at least during the COVID. They, they back on the street trying to stop a bus. They wouldn't even let a bus go through. I'm like, y'all back at this again? Yeah, so they believe that the Jews, the real Jews are black Americans and the church was Constantine's idea. The devil is erasing all that you have learned and known in exchange for something to pacify your current state. People are turning that back on all that they have known. All of it was a lie. All that you have known. Getting spiritually clipped and not down all that you have known the devil is erasing all that they have learned and known in exchange for something to pacify their current state this is easy to do when people do not read the word in the right spirit what do I mean by the right spirit that means you can take the word and use it as a weapon you can weaponize the word you can use it to attack people if you don't read it in the right spirit, it's not going to get in you. The Bible says that it's spirit and it's light. 
that means you got to have the Holy Spirit to decode the word. That was the problem with the Pharisees. The Pharisees knew the word. They knew the letter of the law. But when Jesus came and showed them the other side of it, the spirit, the life side of the word, they couldn't live it. This is easy to do. We must read the word and practice it. We must exhibit the fruits of reading it. This increases our faith and makes us able to defend it. You defend it with the fruit. Why are you reading the word and not exhibiting the fruit? You have to exhibit, exhibit the fruit. Amen? 2 Corinthians 10 and 6. And having in, a, having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. You have to exhibit the fruit in order for you to understand the word. Why are you reading the word and still feeling like trash? Still acting and behaving like trash? That means you're reading it in the wrong spirit. The word should bring you closer to God. Not make you an enemy of your brother. Amen. And then you have to defend your belief that Christ is the only way. Society wants to equate Christianity with other beliefs, but it's the only belief that leads to salvation in God's heart. Christianity is not Christianity. Oh, am I right? Yeah. Christianity is not just insurance to miss hell. Stop thinking that. I'm going to get saved so I don't go to hell. I mean, that's a good part of it, but that's not why you get saved. It's more than that. It's a pathway into the heart of God. If you're not trying to get to God's heart, you're not going to make it to the end. You're not going to pass, go, and collect $200. You got to get in God's heart. That's why we are saved. It's a pathway into God's heart, into obedience to his word and better living. Yeah, I'm not, I, of course I don't want to go to hell now. Don't get me wrong. That's a part of it. But I want to know his heart too. I want to know that I'm doing what he wants me to do. I want to know that I'm on the right path. I want to know that I'm ready when he returns. But society wants to equate Christianity with other beliefs. But it's the only belief Christianity is that leads to salvation. All the other beliefs may yield good feelings in this life but will yield damnation in the next because there is no other name whereby men can be saved. Amen. You know, they, you know, they're forcing everybody on the internet so y'all can see all these folks burning sage and doing all this old weird stuff and mixing Christianity with all this old voodoo and all these different things or whatever. These are folks that don't know the word. These are folks that aren't after or aren't on the path into God's heart. There's only one way to get to God's heart, and that's through his son, Jesus Christ. John 14 and 6, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father except what? By me. There is no other way. Jesus is the only way. You have to defend that. You have to defend that. We must make sure we are saved. We must make sure we have repented of our sins and believe that we are not the same person we were before. How many of you believe you're not the same person you were before? Amen. Amen. How many of you are not even the same person you were last week? That's what I'm talking about. Amen. Amen. That don't mean you robbed a bank a couple of weeks ago and now you can, <laughs> you can put up your lock picking kit. <laughs> but you're not the same person. We must be filled with God's spirit and his spirit. Listen to this, y'all. This is the most important thing I'm going to say today. His spirit brings us the weapons we need to fight the fight of faith. Yeah, you, 
You see people give up on what they believe because they weren't equipped with the weapons. This is not a natural fight. This is a spiritual fight. This is spiritual warfare. I can teach till I'm blue in the face. I've been teaching y'all for years. You got the sermons. You got all of that. I've been preparing you with spiritual warfare. But if you don't have the spirit, you can't fight. You will lose. And the wonderful thing about the spirit, you know, people tell me all the time, man, I just, you know, I try to read the word and I just can't get into it. I mean, I, I you know, I, I, I try to develop a pattern and then I fall off and this and that. That's because you don't have the spirit. You got to get filled with the spirit. The spirit makes the difference. The spirit makes the word comes al come alive. The spirit illuminates what you're reading. You got to have and be filled with the spirit. We must be filled with the spirit and the spirit brings us weapons we need to fight the fight of faith. Then we can become true defenders of the faith and warriors in this last hour. Y'all ready for this battle? How many of you ready for this battle? Yeah. Yeah. I thank God he filled his church, filled his church with strong men that's going to stand in the doorway of their home and defend until the end. That's a real hero. Amen. Defend. I'm going to defend. I'm not letting nothing attack my family. I'm not letting nothing get to my family. I'm going to defend until the end. First Timothy 6 and 12. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. You know, and I know folks, well, it's try to teach eternal security and all that and there's a way to kind of spin it to where well you know it if you wasn't if you were really saved you'll always be saved because if you're really saved you don't want to not be saved so i understand all of that the linguistics and all of that to it or whatever but this just when i said when he says lay hold on eternal life eternal life comes from the word and the word being received right don't eternal life come from the word being received, when you accept Christ, you're accepting the word because the word told you to do that. Am I right? But the Bible also, when, he, when Jesus gave the parable of the sower, said the devil came and stole that seed. He stole the seed. He took it. And that person is lost. That means they received it and it couldn't take root. And the devil was able to steal it from him. And I believe that's why Paul talking to Timothy, he said, man, lay hold on eternal life. Meaning grab it. Secure it. Keep it. Whereunto thou art also called and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses last hour people this is it and you know folks say you know well i mean jesus might come back might not come back for a while well you know whatever i'm gonna be ready and jesus may not come back in 2020 but a whole bunch of other stuff is about to go down A whole bunch of stuff is about to go down. I was talking to someone yesterday, and I told him, I warned the church. And I told y'all. I got up before y'all. And I told you. I said, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen in 2020. I said, but something. I said, something, and it's not good. I can't tell you what it is because God didn't tell you. That. Yeah. Anybody remember that? But I said, but I, I said, 2020, some, some, something, things are about to go down. And we went into fasting and praying. Amen. Amen. We went into fasting and praying. 
And that's what God wants us to continue to do and not be distracted. Because it, you know, they're letting us back out in different things, but this is not over by any means. So we want to make sure we're in the right place. Amen. Everyone bow your heads. Father God, I just thank you, Lord. I thank you for another wonderful gathering. Thank you for these, your people, God, that love you and that want you as I do. Want to be close to you in this hour. Want to know you in this hour. Father God, want to be near you in this hour. I just thank you, Lord, for every family. Thank you for the strong men that are standing in the doorways of their home, protecting their families and their children. Father God, I thank you for the women that are encouraging their men to stand. I thank you, Lord God, for this group. And I pray right now, Father, that they would lay hold on eternal life, that a stony heart would be softened. Father, that your word will not fall by the wayside. No seed will be lost. No seed will be taken or stolen. I pray, Father God, for this group and all groups everywhere, Father, that we will take this hour seriously, that we will heed your warnings, that we will keep a repentant heart, that we will love one another. Father God, that we would secure our place in your return. And Father, help us on the pathway to your heart so we will know what you are saying, not what social media is saying, not what conspiracy theorists are saying, not what the news is saying, not what narratives they're spinning about the end times. All None of that. Help us to know what you're saying, God, in this hour. Father God, so that we can stand boldly and defend the faith and the profession and the hope that is within us. Father, we are your warriors in this hour. So help us to stand, be strong, be consistent, and not waver. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen.